Well, hello everyone, and a very well, warm welcome to Grafton Primary School's very first online assembly. I hope everyone's well, and I hope you're enjoying the time that you're able to spend with your families at the moment. I'm sure you're all working very hard and doing lots of learning, and I'm sure you're all listening to your parents and carers who have looked after you, as well as you always do, and you always do at school as well. And I'm sure you're all having um, a time when you can spend time with your families, but also do some learning as well. I know it's a very strange time at the moment, it's a very strange time for all of us, and I'm sure you're missing school, uh, missing your friends. I know my little boy Fred is very much missing his friends and missing uh, being able to come into school. Um, and we all miss you as well, of course. Um, very much miss the opportunity to say hello and good morning to you all each morning and see your lovely smiling faces and very much miss the energy that you all bring into school. Um, Grafton is a, is a family, always has been, always will be. And sometimes we're not able to see each other as a family and, and that's sad. But we're able to stay together and I know that all the adults who work together and all the teachers and all the TAs who are doing so much really good work at the moment for you and sending all of those, the, the, the work home that you're doing on Seesaw and the work packs that you're working on really hard as well. So we're still a family, we're just not a family in, in the school, in the building, but we're still a school and we're still a family and um, we're still going to do as well as we possibly can do um, and do that all together and hopefully we'll be back together very soon. So it's still important to stay safe, it's still important to do all the right things every day, we're just doing it at home rather than doing it at school. Now, on to today's assembly. Now today's assembly story is one that Andy Young has chosen uh, to celebrate Buddha Day, which is this Thursday the 7th of May. Uh, there'll be more assemblies this week and there'll be more assemblies next week. And until we get back together, we'll find opportunities to share stories with you uh, online and via Seesaw and uh, on the school website as well. But today's story is one about perseverance. And as many of you will know, perseverance is all about really trying hard, even when things are incredibly hard. And of course, things are hard at the moment, um, but you're all still trying hard and no one's giving up because... We all know that you know, very soon things might hopefully be better and we can get back together as a school. So there's a story here all about not giving up and all about the importance of trying hard and working hard and putting all your energy in. And it's a story that was set a long time ago when food and goods didn't come to us on trains and on the back of big lorries but they were taken by carts and by wagons and they were pulled by animals and they were pulled across deserts and across great lands from one country to another. And they used to travel together like a convoy, but it's called a caravan when many wagons and many trucks would travel together. And once upon a time, there was a tradesman who was leading a caravan of goods and trucks from one country to another so that they could sell them. But along their journey, they came to an ed the edge of a desert. And it was a very hot desert. And many of you will know that during the day, because of the sun, the sand gets incredibly hot. So hot that you would not be able to walk on it. Neither would cows, neither would camels, and neither would horses. They wouldn't be able to walk on it either. So the caravan leader wondered what to do. And what they did was... They hired a guide who could help them cross the desert, not during the day, but at night. Because when the sun goes down, the desert also cools down because the sun isn't there heating it up. So they found a guide who could help them travel at night. But of course, it's quite dangerous traveling at night because even if the moon is out, there is not that much light. So they were traveling. After two days of travelling across the desert, because the desert is a vast place, and remember, these weren't, these weren't lorries as we know now, these were wagons and trucks that were being pulled by camels and horses. They'd eaten their evening meal, and they were waiting for the sand to cool down before they could start out again. 
Later that night, the desert guide, who was driving the first cart, saw from the stars that they were getting close to the other side of the desert. So they were happy. But he'd also overeaten, so he was quite relaxed, and he dozed off to sleep. But the cows and the camels who were pulling the trucks didn't stop, even though he'd dozed off. And they can't tell directions, so they didn't know which way they were going. And remember the guide? He'd fallen asleep because he'd maybe eaten a bit too much tea before they set off in the night. And the cows and the horses and the camels, who didn't know the direction, they, little by little, stopped going in the right direction and they ended up turning round. And you know what happened in the end? Rather than heading towards the direction they were going in, they went in a huge, wide circle all the way through the night. Now remember the guide was asleep and the tradesman, leader, he didn't know the route, so he assumed the guide who was in the front caravan was awake and guiding them. But they went in this huge circle and eventually when they stopped, they were in the same place they'd started. Although no one knew this because it was dark and it was night time. The next morning, however, when the sun came up, all the people in the caravan realised they were back at the same spot they'd camped the day before. They lost heart and they began to cry about their condition. And especially as the desert crossing was supposed to have been over by then. And what was even more concerning was that they had no more water and they were afraid they might die in the desert. Because the other problem, of course, in the desert is that there is very little water there. Not like where we live, where we can turn on the tap and have a nice drink of refreshing water. They began to blame the caravan leader and the desert guide. And as they said, they can do nothing without water. Now, the tradesman who was leading the group thought to himself. And he thought, it'd be easy to give up now. All is lost. We have no water. We're in a disastrous situation. Just give up. But of course he realised that if he did that, his leadership had no meaning. If he started crying and regretting his misfortune then, and do nothing, then all the goods that they had in their trucks and their wagons, and all the cows, would be lost. And all the lives of the people, including himself, could be lost as well. And he realised that actually he had to find some energy and face the situation. So he began walking up and down, trying to think out a plan that might save them all. Now, he stayed alert and he noticed out of the corner of his eye a clump of grass. He thought, without water, no plant in this desert could possibly survive. So he thought about what he might do and he realised that if there was grass growing, then surely there must be some water there. So he called over the most energetic of his fellow travellers, who still had energy left, and asked them to dig up the ground on the very spot where the grass was growing. Now they dug and they dug, and after a while, they got down to a large stone. Seeing it, they stopped and were downhearted again and began to blame the leader again, saying, this effort is useless. We're just wasting our time. But the tradesman leader replied, no, no, my friends. If we give up the effort, we will be ruined and our poor animals will die. Let us be encouraged by what we see, not downhearted. He got down in the hole and he put his ear to the stone and he heard the sound of flowing water. Immediately, he called over another member of his group who had been digging, and he said, if you give up, we will all die. So take this heavy hammer and strike the rock. Use all your strength and strike the rock with as much energy and as much power as you possibly can. The boy lifted the hammer over his head and hit the rock as hard as he possibly could. And he himself was most surprised out of the whole group when the rock split in two and a mighty flow of water gushed out from under it. Suddenly, 
all the people were overjoyed. They drank and bathed and washed the animals and cooked their food and they ate and they celebrated. But also, before they left, they thought of others who might come behind them looking for water. And you know what they did? They raised a banner high up so that all the travellers in the area could see it from a long way off. And they would also come to the new spring in the middle of the hot sand desert. And they would also be able to find water to help them. And after they'd filled up their bottles and they'd replenished their supplies, and they knew actually that they were far, not far from their destination, they waited and that night they set off and they continued safely to the end of their journey. So there we are, everyone. Thank you very much for listening to today's story. I hope you've enjoyed listening to it. And please remember, keep working, keep listening, keep trying your hardest. And remember the story of perseverance. Even when things are tough, even when things are hard, we keep trying and we keep trying our hardest. And most of all, everyone, do stay safe and we'll see each other very soon. And remember, there's another assembly later this week and there'll be more assemblies next week as well. And I look forward to reading you more stories again soon. Thank you. Goodbye.